when you find yourself in this loop where you're constantly saying yes when you desire to say no, you get a lot of resentment. Resentment begins to overflow your heart. And instead of empowering you, like your boundaries are designed to do, they become a source of frustration and a source of suffering, y'all. Let me know if this is hidden with you. Let me know if you are picking up what I'm putting down. Because what starts to happen is that you wonder, why is it so hard for the people in your life, the people that you continue to show up for, to respect your boundaries? Why can't they give you a break? Why does it always have to be you taking care of everything? Hola, mis amores. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the key to winning the game of boundaries for self-care with confidence. I have my notes ready, so if you see me turning to the side, it's because I'm making sure I am on track because you know I'm good for a tangent moment. Now, if you are currently a intuitive black woman and you desire to show up to your boundaries, and show up to your boundaries when it comes to your self-care, get ready. Get ready because today I'm going to share with you everything that I have learned that has helped me and my clients do exactly that. This is a great time to grab your journal, to grab your water bottle, because we're going to be talking about all the gems today, and I want to make sure that you grab them. Now, I'm going to be walking you through the exact same steps that I am taking right now to honor my boundaries with my self-care. And I'm getting ready to take 10 amazing intuitive black women with me on a journey into prioritizing themselves with joy. So this is a great time for me to show you this part of the process. This love letter, I'm excited about this one, y'all. I'm excited because this love letter is for every single intuitive black woman leader who desires to feel excited and joyful about saying yes to herself and no to others. This love letter is for the intuitive black woman that desires to embrace the beauty of prioritizing herself and to prioritize herself with her body, her mind, her heart, and her spirit. This love letter is for the intuitive black woman that's ready to enjoy the journey of self-care as much as the destination, y'all. So I hope that you are excited because we're going to have a great time today. Now, are you listening to this episode on Apple Podcast? If so, I would love for you to leave us a five-star or a six-star review if you enjoyed today's conversation. Now, this podcast is a video podcast, so make sure you head to the show notes and grab the link for our YouTube channel so that you can get the full podcast experience, honey. If you're catching this video on YouTube, hola, please let me know how's your spirit doing in the comments below this video. I love to connect with you and get to know y'all better because, you know, we are family and we're here supporting one another. And if you feel aligned, Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, especially if you haven't done so yet. And while you're at it, you want to make sure you want to make sure that you turn on the notification bell or that you what is it called? That you hit the notification bell. Listen to me, turn on. Hit the notification bell so that you are the first to know as soon as we drop an episode because if you don't hit that notification bell, you're not going to get alerted, y'all. That's just how how YouTube works. And if you enjoyed this video, if you are feeling like your is talking to you and she's touching your heart, make sure that you share this episode with the daughter of the African diaspora that you love because sharing is caring. Now, before we get started into today's conversation, I'm going to make you an invitation. We're just going to go straight into it because I know that there are those of you here watching and listening that desire to work with me and partner with me so that we can co-create some magic in your life. This week, I've opened up six spots on my calendar for those of you that desire to work with me. Now, if you want to work with me, you're going to want to 
book, apply actually for a self-care audit. The self-care audits are 45 minute no cost calls that I invite you to be a part of where we do a deep dive into exactly what it's going to take for you to put yourself first, no matter what in your life and to do it in a way that you are overflowing with mental calm and with inner peace, because you know, that's what I value. I'm all about prioritizing your self-care with joy. And that's what I desire for you. If you are committed to putting yourself first, if you are committed to showing up powerfully for you, these self-care audits are going to be extremely transformational and you're going to want to make sure that you apply for one of them. To do that, there is a link in the show notes and there's definitely a link in the description box below this video so that you can grab it and you can submit your application for one of them. I have three left, so make sure that you get one if you would like to chat. If we are meeting for the first time, hola, my name is Yanori Ponso and I want to welcome you to the Yanori Ponso podcast where each episode is a love letter to my future self and to every single intuitive black woman leader that's healing with joy. If you're new to the family, my zone of brilliance, the thing that makes me different it's my ability to grow by putting my best self first, no matter what I do. I've dedicated the last 14 years of my life to ensuring that intuitive Black women leaders put themselves first because I'm passionate about that. And I want them to put themselves first all while they are being the best version of themselves, while they build their legacies while they shift their lineages and they do this as the most authentic version of who they are. That's why I am the go-to spiritual guide for every single intuitive black woman leader that desires to prioritize the self-care with joy. Which brings me to today's episode. Today we're going to focus on the key to win the game of boundaries with self-care. And to do this, with confidence, y'all. I want to talk about this because it's a very important topic for me. It's a topic that hits home for me. As an intuitive Black woman that focuses on self-care, I've had quite a bit of time with this and I've learned some things that I feel like can really support you, especially because most intuitive Black women, they've learned the boundaries are about teaching others how to treat us. Most intuitive black women have learned that the boundaries are about teaching others how to treat us, how to treat them. And I'm talking about most of us have learned that boundaries is just about saying no and asking people to respect the time we've set for ourselves. Let me know if you have felt like that in the comments below this video, or if you're in Apple Podcasts, come to YouTube and talk to us. Grab the link in the show notes. Let me know if you felt like boundaries are only about telling people no and treat, teaching people how to treat you. If you felt like that, let me know in the comments below. And when you walk like that, right, when you move like that, there's something that happens. You get annoyed. You get annoyed and you get frustrated when people in your life don't respect your boundaries. You get irritated. You get irritated when people ask you to do things that you don't want to. You get irritated when people call you to fix problems because you are the go-to fixer in your household, with your family, in your business, or in your career. You get annoyed and irritated when you feel forced to say yes to things, to circumstances and situations that you may have already said no to or you are desiring to say no to. Now, why is that? And what happens when you do this? Let's address the second question first. When you do this, you become resentful towards your loved ones and your colleagues and your clients. When you find yourself in this loop where you're constantly saying yes, when you desire to say no, you get a lot of resentment. Resentment begins to overflow your heart. And instead of empowering you, like your boundaries are designed to do, they become a source of frustration 
and a source of suffering, y'all. Let me know if this is hidden with you. Let me know if you are picking up what I'm putting down. Because what starts to happen is that you wonder, why is it so hard for the people in your life, the people that you continue to show up for, to respect your boundaries? Why can't they give you a break? Why does it always have to be you taking care of everything? I want you to tell me if you have ever felt like this before. I want you to come to the YouTube channel, or if you're already here below this video, let me know if you have felt like, why can people give you a break? You want to know how I know these things? You want to know how I know what's going on behind the scenes? Let me tell you a story. In 2010, I decided I was going to eat healthier. I had gotten back from Honduras after spending a year there and shifting my life. And I'm like, I want to, I want to eat healthier. So I was living back in New York city with my family, with my mother and my sister and my dad. And I asked my family to stop buying so many, so many unhealthy snacks and unhealthy foods in the house, because I didn't want to be tempted with eating it because I already said I wanted to start eating healthier. Did they listen to me? No. Do you think they listened to me? They did not listen to me. The snacks kept on coming in. It was almost like the moment I said, can y'all start buying this unhealthy foods? They felt like this is the time to start buying all the unhealthy foods. And I grew up in a household where my family, especially my mother, because her love language is food, is to, she focuses on cooking for flavor and not nutrition. So when I was eating healthier and I was shifting my lifestyle, it was very challenging for me to be around that environment because there was always unhealthy food around me. And I asked them to help me by not having those foods in the house and they didn't listen. Now, in 2015, as I began to realize that it was important for me to set boundaries and I got deeper into my, my practice of putting myself first, I asked my friends and family to stop calling me after 10 o'clock. Because I started to realize that I would pick up the phone at all hours of the night for folks. And that left me feeling stressed. That left me feeling um, frustrated. I wasn't getting enough sleep. And I'm like, I got to make some changes. So I asked my people to stop calling me after 10 o'clock. Do you think that they listen to me? Do you think they stopped calling me at 10 o'clock? Now, if you answer no, then you got it right. Because they did not. They did not stop calling me after 10 o'clock. They actually started calling me at the same frequency like before I said to stop calling me. Whenever they feel like calling me, they will call me 10, 10.30, 11, 11.30. It didn't matter. They will do whatever they wanted to do, even though I specifically requested that they stop doing that. This is how I know what you're going through or what you've been through or what you're currently experiencing. Because I literally been there. I know what it's like to set the boundary and have people not respected. I know what it's like to ask people to do something for your own well-being because you're looking to put yourself first and have people ignore it. That's how I know what is happening behind the curtains. That's how I know what's happening with your boundaries when it comes to your self-care. Here's what I've learned though. Whether you know it or not, whether you are aware of it or not, most intuitive black women, that's what they have learned. They have learned that the boundaries are about other people. They have learned that the boundaries are for other people. They have learned that the boundaries are to be respected by other people. That's where the frustration comes from. Because in this approach, in order for you to care for yourself, in order for you to win the game of boundaries with your self-care, you got to depend on other people. You got to depend on other people respecting your boundaries. You got to depend on other people following what you're saying. You got to depend on other people doing what you've asked. And you and I both know that we can't control other people. You and I both know that other people are going to other people. People are going to people and they're not going to care about 
what you are asking them to do in the way that you want them to care for the things that you are asking them to do, especially when it comes to your self-care. And that's not personal, y'all. This is just how it is. Here's the truth, though. Here's the truth, and here's what I want you to really walk away with from this episode as you are listening. The only person who has to respect your boundaries is you. The only person that has to learn how to treat you, it's you. It's not your mother, it's not your father, it's not your siblings, it's not your kids, it's not your spouse, it's not the colleague, it's not the client, it's not the boss, it's you. It took me five years, five years to learn that the only person who has to respect my boundaries is me. It took me five years to learn this and I'm sharing it with you right now so that it doesn't take you five years to learn it. Because it took me five years, five years of going back and forth with people, five years of asking people to stop doing things, five years of getting angry, of feeling resentful, of feeling frustrated with folks because they weren't doing what I asked them to do. Five years before I realized that the only person that had to respect the boundary was me. How long is it going to take you before you realize that? How long is that going to be for you? How long has it been for you if you already realized that? Let me know in the comments below this video. Let's have an honest conversation. I want to share with you how I started to respect my boundaries, especially with my self-care, because I know how important this is for you. I know how much you desire to show up powerfully for yourself, for your loved ones, for your children, for your business, for your relationships. I know that you want to be the best version of you in everything that you create. I know that you are committed to showing up unapologetically in your life. And I know the boundaries are a big part of that process for you and that you desire to do it in a way that makes sense and that feels good. So I want to share with you how I've done this. The key, I'm going to give you the key right now. The key to winning the boundaries game with self-care and doing it with confidence is to monitor yourself. Is to monitor yourself, is to look at yourself. The key is to get really clear on how you're acting versus how you think you're acting. You got to see how you're showing up. You got to see how are you showing up to your boundaries? You got to pay attention to how do you react in the moment when it's time to uphold your boundary? Because you want other people to respect them, but we can't control other people and we can't control other people. So we got to look at the only person we can control and that's us. That's you. How do you show up to your boundary? Are you telling yourself no? How does it feel to tell yourself no? If you made a decision that you're going to eat healthier foods, how does it feel to tell yourself no when there are unhealthy foods in front of you? If you made a decision that you're going to go to sleep at 1030, how does it feel to say no to the next episode of your favorite show at 11 o'clock or at 1015? How does that feel for you? Are you willing to do that? If you've said you're going to show up powerfully in your career, how does it feel to say no to the pattern of shrinking yourself? Are you willing to say no to those ideas that used to run in your life? Are you willing to say no to those ways of being when they show up for you? Are you willing to do the hard thing? This is what's required, y'all. Are you willing to put yourself first and to hold yourself accountable when it feels hard? Are you tapping into your courage? Are you tapping into your courage to look at your actions with uncomfortable honesty, with uncomfortable honesty and compassion and ownership? Are you doing that? 
Are you willing to do that? Are you down for that? I want you to write this down. I told you to have your journal ready. So while you grab it for those of you that didn't, let me drink some of this water. You ready? Winning the game of boundaries for my self-care and doing it with confidence starts with me. Winning the game of boundaries for my self-care with confidence starts with me. Because it starts with you. It starts with you. It starts with you. It starts with you. It ends with you. You got to be the one at the door. You got to be the one at the door of every single request and be willing to shut it down. You got to be you. Boundaries is not something that we do or we say. It's boundaries are something that we are. Boundaries are a way of life, a way of being. It's a lifestyle. Boundaries not something that you do. It's a way of being. Ooh, write that one down too. Boundaries is not something that you do. It's a way of being. Because that's what it takes to live in alignment, y'all. What you experience as people not respecting your boundaries, guess what? It's really you experiencing you not respecting your boundaries. I know. It is a sign that you're being invited. Because you see, it's not a bad thing. When we're not honoring our boundaries, we seem to think it's a bad thing. But it isn't. It's not a bad thing. When we are not honoring our boundaries, it is a sign that you are being invited to put yourself first. It's a beautiful opportunity for you. It's an opportunity to love yourself unconditionally and to shed the parts of you that do not serve you. Anytime that you are not respecting your boundaries, you are being invited to redirect. And then it's up to you to follow that invitation and to accept it so that you can show powerfully in your life. This is a daily decision. And this is what challenges most people, especially those of us that are intuitive black women leaders, because we're constantly being pulled in so many different directions that we tend to fall in the trap of believing that we can do it sometimes and, do, and not do it other times. When in reality, honoring your boundaries, putting yourself first is a daily decision. And sometimes it's difficult and challenging to make this decision when we feel uncomfortable. Let me know if you felt like that before. If you felt like anytime you feel uncomfortable, it's challenging to honor your boundaries, challenging to say no to the unhealthy foods. It's challenging to say no to snoozing your alarm before you wake up. It's challenging to say no to the workout. It's challenging to say no to reducing your prices if you have a business. It's challenging to say no to your spouse in taking that time for yourself so that you can rest and recharge. Let me know if you felt like that. And I'm going to share with you what it takes to move through those moments and do it with ease. Because to make this daily decision of prioritizing yourself with joy and to do it when it feels uncomfortable, you got to have a reliable, proven system to honor your boundaries when it feels hard. You got to have a reliable, proven system to honor and respect your boundaries when you don't feel like it. Because there are going to be some times you don't feel like it. There are times where I don't feel like honoring my boundaries. I have my boundary going to bed by 1030. I'm currently, right now, holding myself accountable because there are plenty of times where I'd rather watch Dragon Ball Z or I'd rather watch the NBA than to go to bed at 1030. So you got to have a system in place so that you can show up for yourself when it feels hard. You got to have a reliable system in place so that you can know what tweaks to make when you get off track. 
I actually want to show you something right now. I know that honoring your boundaries as a black woman can be extremely challenging. If you're currently challenged with putting yourself first, this is normal. You are not alone. I literally just share with you that I am there with you right now. The most important thing for you to know is that your boundaries are only a small part of an effective self-care strategy. What you're looking at here, put this here, what you're looking at here is a proven framework that we use to help intuitive black women leaders embody the self-care in 90 days without feeling paralyzed by guilt or shame so that they can live the life and have the bodies and the health and the wealth they envision for themselves. Focusing on their self-care routines and rituals in a way that leaves them feeling confident and empowered. Focus on their boundaries. Now, if you're an intuitive Black woman leader and you are the go-to with your family, with your career, in your community, and you want to get crystal clear on the one thing that's most aligned for you right now to embody your self-care, you want to make sure you grab a self-care audit below. This is a 45-minute no-cost call to ensure that you are putting yourself first with calm, mental calm, and inner peace as you prioritize your self-care with joy. You may be asking yourself, Yonori, why are you offering this? And it's really simple because a percentage of the intuitive Black women leaders that we speak with, they end up hiring us to help them achieve these results, to help them put themselves first with joy. Listen, this is a no pressure call because there's a lot of pressure coming from all directions for you as you are an intuitive Black woman leader. So I already know you're getting pressure from left and right. Either way, I'm going to help you get crystal clear on the exact next step that is aligned with you right now to put yourself on the number one spot of your to-do list with ease and with joy. So again, if you are serious about showing up to your self-care with confidence, instead of putting others' needs above you, if you're serious about showing up to your boundaries with self-responsibility, if you're serious about showing up to your boundaries with self-accountability, then you're going to want to book one of these self-care audits right now. You're going to want to apply for one of these self-care audits right now. There is a link in the show notes waiting for you so that you can grab it and you can be part of this healing experience in community so you don't have to do this alone. Remember, having a reliable proven system to honor your boundaries when you don't feel like it, having a reliable proven system to know what tweaks to make when you get off track is a non-negotiable, y'all. And when you know this, when you have this in place, you are able to win the game of boundaries when it comes to your self-care with confidence because you know exactly what to do to align yourself in the moments that you get out of alignment. And those moments are going to happen. We often seem to believe that we got to be perfect. We seem to fall into the trap of thinking that we either got to go all or nothing. Either we're doing it perfectly all the time or we don't need to be doing it at all. And the reality is that when we show up to our boundaries, we're learning to treat ourselves. We're learning to be gentle with ourselves. We're learning to care for ourselves. And that is part of self-care. That is the part of self-care that most people don't talk about. And when we take the time to talk about it and explore what it takes to move through it with ease and with joy, we can expand it. When you are showing up to your boundaries with the energy that you desire, Everybody else starts to show up to your boundaries with the energy that you desire. Because when I started to shift how I was approaching my boundaries, when I started to, instead of telling my family what not to do, when I stopped eating it, when they would bring healthy foods to the household and I stopped eating those foods, guess what? They started to bring healthier foods into the household. Because I learned that my family didn't know what to replace those foods with for me. So I had to teach them. By teaching myself first, by removing the, removing the energy of complaining that the food was there 
and instead choosing to bring in the food that I desire. And they began to do the same thing. When I stopped picking up the phone after 10 o'clock, they stopped calling. And if they would call after 10 o'clock, they would, they would leave a voicemail and say, hey, I know it's after 10, so I know you're not going to see it till tomorrow. I just wanted to share it with you right now. So it's up to you to teach yourself first how to treat you, and then you'll see how other people follow. You see how it works? You got to lead by example for real, for real. Let's do a quick recap. So today we unpack the key to win the game of boundaries with self-care and do it with confidence. Whether you know it or not, if you are an intuitive black woman leader, you've learned that your boundaries are about other people, are for other people. That if you have a boundary, other people got to respect it. Other people got to honor it. Other people got to do right by you because you do right by them. That is the conditioning that you have developed, that you have been raised with. Whether you are aware of this at a conscious level or not, this is happening in your subconscious. And this conditioning breeds quite a bit of frustration and anger because you are relying on something that's outside of your control. You are relying on other people to give you permission to care for yourself. And you may not realize that that's what's happening but when you take a look under the hood, that is what you're going to discover that is going on. And that's because this approach is focused on depending on something that you can't control. And the only person you can control is you. So it is important that you are able to make those changes for yourself because other people are not going to do it for you. This is why taking accountability for ourselves is so important when it comes to our boundaries. This is why the boundary starts with you. Because the truth is that the only person that has to respect your boundaries is you. The only person that has to learn how to treat you is you. I'm going to say it again. The only person that has to learn how to treat you is you. There is a reason why it took me five years to learn this. There is a reason why it took me five years of resentment, of frustration, of going back and forth with other people before I cemented this lesson. Because that's what I was taught. And if you are anything like me, that's also what you were taught. And this is why having a reliable system in place that is proven, that can help you, number one, honor your boundaries, especially when it feels uncomfortable. And number two, that can help you identify what tweaks to make when it's time to adjust is a non-negotiable. And this is exactly why I am inviting you to apply for one of these self-care audits because I know how powerful it is to have a system in place. I shared with you earlier in this episode that I am currently shifting my sleep routine from going to bed at Lord knows what time. It's close to midnight right now to 1030. And because I have a system that I can rely on, I know exactly how to tweak my routine. I know exactly what changes to make. And there are small changes, but they have a big impact so that I can honor myself in the way that I desire. This is how I know what works because I've been doing it for 14 years. And I also help other intuitive black women do this. So if you are in this space right now where you desire to show up to your bondage with that same level of confidence and win this game of boundaries, you want to make sure you grab one of these self-care audits. I have three left for this week, so make sure that you apply for one, okay? Now, before I go, if you're listening to this episode on Apple Podcast, make sure that if you enjoyed it, you leave us a five-star or a six-star review. The Yanori Ponsel Podcast is a video podcast, so make sure that you head to the show notes and you grab the link to our YouTube channel so that you can have the full podcast experience and you can see the visuals. You can see this beautiful robe I'm wearing, I'm wearing today because she's giving you divine feminine energy today, honey. And if you're catching this on YouTube, remember to subscribe. If you feel aligned to what we shared today, if you feel like I'm speaking your language, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you hit the notification bell to be notified as soon as we drop an episode. And 
Let me know what you enjoyed about this episode in the comments below. What was your biggest takeaway from today? What surprised you from this conversation, from this love letter? Because I love to read your comments and I love to connect with y'all as we are building this beautiful healing family here on YouTube. In the next episode, I'm going to share with you what it takes to give yourself grace with ease. Because I know that as intuitive black women, many of us are just now learning to give ourselves grace. And that process can feel quite uncomfortable. And giving yourself grace is another powerful piece in the puzzle of loving yourself unconditionally. Especially because there are times when the inner critic is going to show up. And in those moments, my desire is that you're going to be prepared and equipped to nurture your inner critic whenever he comes knocking on your door. And I desire for you to do that. Overflow with mental calm and inner peace. The next episode is going to air on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. And I really, really look forward to seeing you there. Thank you for joining me for today's episode of the Yanori Ponzo podcast, where every episode is a love letter to my future self and to every single daughter of the African diaspora healing with joy. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Yanori Ponzo and welcome to the family. Thank you for joining me. My zone of brilliance is my ability to grow by bringing the best version of myself into everything that I create. I am the go-to spiritual guide for intuitive black women leaders that are prioritizing the self-care with joy. And I am here to make sure that you see things clearly. Thank you for joining me, Miss Amores, and I will see you next time. Hasta luego.